Hello, Holy Warmod here. Welcome to the seventh tutorial in the GLUA Pro series where we're going to be taking a look at loops, blocks, arrays, and matrices. So let's start by setting up the print command as usual, which will be printed to the left hand side console. And here I'd like to emphasize a point from the last video where we had if true, then end, and we had some block of code. So the block is defined by two different bounds. In this case, within the if statement is a block of code. And I want you to actually take note this entire file counts as a block of code as well. So this if statement is a block of code inside of the block of code. Now, isn't that fun? So let's emphasize this a little bit. And we're going to say i is going to be equal to 1 as initial condition. We're going to show you the repeat command, which is going to repeat this block of code until the given condition is met. So we're going to say until i is equal to 10. However, how do we increase i? Well, we're going to have to do that manually inside the block of code. And we're going to say i is equal to i plus 1 every time this is repeated. And we'll re print out this i so we can emphasize this in the console. As you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And on 10, it does not actually repeat this again. Thus, it's not printing 10. Now, we can mimic this by keeping the same block of code right here. And we'll say i is equal to 1. And while i is less than 10, then, actually instead of then, we're going to use do. And do is unique to loops. So do is going to then execute this block of code until this condition is met. So here we're going to end. And as you can see, it does the exact same thing all the way to 9. Now, what's nice then is we also have the for loop. So a for loop comes in two different forms. Let's start with a numeric for loop. The numeric for loop has an initial value. So we say x is equal to 100. And then it has some endpoint. We'll set to 0. And then how much we're increasing by. So we're going to increase by negative 10. And this is going to count down from 100 to 0. And of course, instead of then, you put do, remember. And we're going to end and then execute this block of code. In this case, we're simply going to be printing x. All right, so now we have 100 to 0. Now I want you to note that because x is defined here in this block does not mean you can call it outside of the block. So when I call it here, it's going to return nil at the end, as you see. So let's actually add a block of code inside of a block of code. And here we go. We're going to say if x equals 20, then end right here. And we're going to say break. Now what break does is when this condition is met and then break is called, it's going to stop the loop in its tracks and continue executing the rest of the code within this file, which remember is also a block of code. So we have a block of code containing a block of code containing a block of code. Okay, so I really hope that emphasizes block of code by now. So let's execute this. So as you can see, it stops at 20 and it goes for the nil. Now, alternatively, you have return. And the difference between break and return is that return is not going to execute the rest of the lines after the return in the given block of code. Okay, so there's no nil printed out this time. Now, let's take another example. We have the numeric for loop. So let's go over the other type, which is called the generic for loop. So we're going to have first some string, and that string is going to be, I really love soup. And then that table, which we're going to have, is going to utilize string explode. So string explode. And we're going to separate our values of the table by space. So it's going to take this, assign it to key value 1, key value 2, key value 3, and key value 4 with exclamation point as well. So we're separating it by space. And we're going to be using string. So just to show you what happens, we're going to print table, table, and there we go. We have I really love soup assigned to key values 1, 2, 3, and 4 respectively. Now, with the generic for loop, what we can do is actually go through a table. And you remember how we'd increase with I. Well, instead of increasing with I, we're increasing by key value this time. So we're going to have four key value, and we're going to have value in pairs. And then the table, which we're referencing with in pairs. So in this case, it's going to be table do, because we must use do. And we're going to be doing this block of code. OK, so the block of code in this case, well, let's mimic the print table command. So we'll say print, and then we're going to have key value. The second argument will be this equal sign. 
And then lastly, the argument here will be value. So look, we have the print table command, except not exactly because it doesn't account for blocks of codes with inside a block of code. Let's expand upon this though. Okay, so let's emphasize that you can actually use if value, so we're adding another block of code, if values love in this case, which that's the third value in the table, then we're going to break. So we can show you that a break also works here. And also in addition to that break, hey, let's print out how much we really love soup. So we're going to put soup. There we go. And as you can see, it prints out soup. So that's how a break would work inside the for loop right there. And now let's look at arrays. So array is very similar to a table and it must be incrementing numerically for it to be considered an array. So here we're gonna have four i is equal to one. So remember, this is the numeric four. We're gonna start at value i, go to the end point of 1000. And lastly, instead of putting a one here to say we're incrementing by a value of one, that's just gonna be applied if we don't put that there. So let's say the block of code here is going to be array and we're gonna set our key value for the table or array in this case array is going to be equal to i plus 1000. And this is going to give us the second millennium. So let's look here and if we actually print this out, so we'll say print table and we're gonna print table array, you can see now we have every year in the second millennium. You can put a negative value to a positive value. That'll work fine as well. However, traditionally in Lua, we like to start arrays at a value of one for key values. All right, so now let's look into a matrix. So with a matrix, it's pretty much a multi-dimensional table or multi-dimensional array in this case. So we're gonna have four, i equals one to five and do. And then we're going to have some block of code. In this case, we're going to have matrix Remember, we have the table key value of i, and this is going to create a new row. And now we're going to have another block of code here, which is going to say for j equals i to 5, do. And then we're going to have our block. And what this is going to do when we give uh, call this value in a matrix, let's, let's make it multiply. How about that? So we'll say matrix i, which is going to be the first input, j, is going to equal to i times J. So if we print this table really quick, just to show you what the final structure looks like, there we go. We have the matrix. So the I key value is going to be the leftmost number. And then the inner numbers on here uh, in the middle, as you can see before the equal sign, that's going to be representing J. And then the final values, which I times J are going to be the rightmost values there. So let's implement this. So we can multiply numbers from one to five if we do matrix. And let's say we want I value of one and a J value of five. So one times five, that's gonna give us five. Well, what about three times five? Well, that'll give us 15. And I value of five times five, well, it's 25. And so on and so forth. And there you go, we pretty much mimicked multiplication with a matrix. So anyway, I hope that really informs you about blocks of code and the loops and whatnot. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave some in the comment section below. If you like the material, like, subscribe, and share, and that bell thing as well. And I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.